Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Super Soldier Talk. I am James Rink, and we have a very exciting show for you today. Uh, we also have a very special guest here. So um, we have Ismael Perez, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read his bio. Uh, he was recruited as an ultra elite super soldier in the secret space program by an off world group known as the Central Race that comes from the future, aka Wingmakers, according to the ACIO. He then served 60 years in the 5th Corps of Radiant Guardians to fight in the multiverse war against the evil AI. The Radiant Guardians work with higher dimensional beings beyond the Galactic Federation. During this time, he helped liberate galaxies in the cosmic sector of Inzra that consists of 100,000 universes. Our local universe is number 84 and our constant constellation number is 70 in our system, which which our planet is located, is number 24, comprised of 52 local star clusters. Within that cluster, we are known as the planetary body 606. He now serves as a cosmic ambassador representing an intergalactic alliance known as the Covenant of Palador. This is a cosmic treaty that was initiated by the forces of light in the higher dimensions to protect and guard the Earth from the Draco forces and the AI. There is a collective known as the Animus that the Guardian Alliance has been battling for over a million years, and Ishmael was a warrior in many lifetimes as recalled from his many past lives. The majority of starseeds that have volunteered for the call to rescue this planet, including Ishmael, have been selected to come here to help. Ishmael is one of the inner council members who is here to bring forth the next level of cosmic disclosure that will restore our planet back to its original glory and fulfillment of the galactic prophecies. The information that he's going to bring forth has never been heard before on this planet. And we also got a link to your book in the description, the Our Cosmic Origins, which taps into several of your past lives, uh, as well as true galactic roots of humanity and the origin of the cosmos and the Earth's relationship to the multiverse. So <laughs> without further ado, thank you uh, for coming on here, Ishmael. I appreciate it. Thank you, James, for having me here. Right. So um, by the way, and thank you, audience members, for joining us as well. We are live and um, we will do the best I'll do my best to get around the sensors because I've already got one strike already. Uh, so I am. Um, anyways, uh, but I think we're going to be fine because we're going to we're going to stay on topic to SSP uh, disclosure, which the AI gets confused about. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, so let's go here and maybe we could start with um, how did this all begin for you? Um, being a ultra soldier, does that mean that you were created in some kind of laboratory and then inserted into the public, uh, such as in Project Surrogate? Uh, the way my mother described it was that uh, she was actually being abducted the whole time she was pregnant, um, a few times a month. And she just remember, recalled uh, seeing these beings of light. She called them angels, but uh, she also recognized that they were inside a huge mothership. And they were actually using a uh, gene splicing in order to um, delete, add, and you know modify genetics. Pretty much, it's, they were they were actually mix at mixing my DNA with all these different celestial races from different universes. And so, um, I was one of a hundred individuals that served in Core Five that were actually um, also taken to be you know genetically modified up in a mothership and the beings that were conducting the operation were known as the central race uh, they do have other names uh, some people call them the azurites which uh which is a uh, 12 dimensional group of of beings that operate within the rock confederacy and the rock confederacy is a uh is a a realm beyond the galactic levels of reality going beyond the local universe into the cosmic minor sector of Ezra as well so they come from really high high level dimensional realities and so it all started with these little stories that my mother used to tell me as a kid i used to think she was just you know trying to make me feel different because i was always bullied and picked on and i never quite fit in so she would so i used to think she was telling me these stories to make me feel better to make me feel like i was special but uh you know one day she passed away when i was 16 and 
you know, and, and I just remember her telling me uh, two days prior to her passing away, she was saying, Ishmael, everything that I told you about you being an experiment that is being conducted by beings of light is actually true. You know, and one day you are going to receive your memories. One day you are going to know who you are um, in, in your multidimensional reality and who you were prior to incarnating here on the earth. And when she said that, um, I, I started, it actually triggered me, James, you know, it, it caused me to like want to start meditating and, and, and it made me just hungry for knowledge. And then that's when I began investigating things for myself. But uh, right before that happened, um, I did experience moments of uh, uh, what they called missing time in my life where um, I found myself walking on a particular street. And it's funny because it's always the same street. But this is the thing, James. I didn't know how I got there. I didn't even know what I did prior to walking on that particular street. All I remember was that I just ended up there without any recollection of what I did, you know, to get there. Like, I don't know if I was coming from school, from my house. I don't know where I was coming from. And so that uh, incident occurred three times in my life when I was 16, uh, 18 and uh 19 16 18 19 about going to be 20 towards my late 19 year when i was yeah about to be 20 years old and that's when i noticed that that happened twice three times in my life so that that's always been with me you know i've always wondered why that happened to me why did i have any recollection as to why i ended up just walking on that street without knowing how i got there um and so again you know i started going within myself i started meditating and that's when I felt like I was being communicated. I was receiving transmissions from other dimensions. And um, I, I felt a connection to the off-world entities. I felt that there was so, some sort of a, a intimate connection between me and these off-world entities. So then I, at that point, I knew I was different. At that point, I knew that I wasn't human. Okay, And, you know, eventually I started... Um, having memories I, through meditation james i started having memories of my past lives in lyra as a Lyran, you know um i guess high Lyran commander i also had memories uh, slash warrior i also had memories of life in sirius life in the pleiadians and i'm thinking to myself why am i having these memories of being this great galactic warrior in these galactic wars, you know, uh, and this was uh, during a time where people were, were still watching Star Wars and Star Trek. And, and to me, I, I felt like I was going crazy, you know, having these memories of being part of these galactic wars. And so I decided to investigate things to see if there was any tangible records that actually confirmed any of this information. And I discovered a whole lot of information, you know, due to my hung hunger for knowledge of this stuff. And um, it wasn't until I was probably in my early 30s um, and mid-30s that I started having these strange dreams that I was part of this group of, of uh, elite super soldiers. And the reason I call it elite was because we had abilities that you would only see in like Marvel movies or DC movies. Some of us were able to literally fly like Superman, uh, emit uh, laser beams through our eyes, uh, electromagnetic plasma waves uh, through our hands, like, you know, the X-Men, uh, capable of controlling weather with our minds, um, capable of manipulating matter, energy, and time. And it had a lot to do with us being upgraded, you know. So I started having memories of just uh, kind of like what we see in the video game Halo, where we're strapped into this advanced aircraft and, and we have the things on and we, we're wearing these special suits and all the men are built like they're genetically just like like Captain America looking. Everybody was buff and all the girls were fit. And I just remember it was, um, I think it was 50 men and 50 women, a total of 100 of us that were part of the column uh, or what we call Core 5, um, serving within, you know, the, uh, I guess what, what some call the the uh, program called Radiant Guardians, and and the first person who who actually came out and and termed that was Randy. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, was a uh, Randy Kramer, I believe. He was the first one to come out uh, uh, that uh, talked about Radiant Guardians. So before Randy Kramer, I had no clue. I mean, I've heard of like you know um, Aaron McCollin, I think. I've heard of uh, uh, what's his name. Um, the guy that uh, died with the black goo, I forget his name, but he was killed. Max Fears. 
Yes, I heard of him, and then I, I've heard uh, what's uh, uh, Corey Good's testimony. But they only talked about radiate. I mean, they only talked about Solar Warden. So it wasn't until I heard Randy Kramer's testimony about Radiant Guardians where it clicked for me because that's the name that I kept getting in these dreams: Radiant Guardians, Radiant Guardians. And I just remember just you know scenarios where we were actually we were taking on this vessel. Uh, we would uh, teleport to planet Jupiter because that's where the the main base for Radiant Guardians was located because, again, um, planet Jupiter also acts as an intergalactic, um, you know, where, where many galaxies are actually coming, um, sending representatives from different galaxies to create some sort of an intergalactic union uh, between, you know, billions of galaxies. And that's what's happening on planet Jupiter, by the way. So that was our main place you know because they knew about the uh, of the programs that we were we, we were engaged in um and so i just remember teleporting to planet jupiter and then from planet jupiter they will uh, pause, pause a second was sure, jupiter, sure. uh was that actually solid or or did you go to jupiter command space um, station it, it, uh, I believe that, yeah, it was called Jupiter Command, but they also had another name for the city. Because I know at Mars, we have Prime Areas, and then uh, there's another one. Thomas. But I think, yeah, Prime Areas. And then I think yeah, Jupiter uh, is... New War Park. Is that the other city in Mars? Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't know that part because I, I never went. I never They never located me to Mars or dispatched me to Mars. I always went straight to Jupiter. But I do believe that the soldiers of Super... The, the soldiers of Solar Warden did go to Mars as a you know preliminary before before going off into their mission so i do remember going inside jupiter and it was like just huge huge interstellar you know structures where there were many terrestrial races from you know representing billions of galaxies and i just remember um go, does, when i went say that again well does that mean that the surface of jupiter is solid um, the surface of, of jupiter is inhabited by higher dimensional beings beyond the sixth dimension but because we were in the I guess we were operating from the fourth and fifth dimensional. We were actually inside Jupiter where the structures are located. Yeah. Hmm. And I just remember uh, just many representatives of different galaxies sh sharing us on saying, okay, you know, giving us their, their blessing before we went off on the mission saying, wow, you guys are, you guys were uh, cultivated for this. You know, uh, many universes came together to, to uh, you know, create you guys. Uh, and you guys are the pinnacle of that. And now here we are ready to employ you guys on your first, you know, cosmic mission to restore and save uh, many of the uh, galaxies and universes that have been affected by this cosmic AI. And and it's not just the Onimus. I mean, we're, we were fighting uh, different cybernetic intelligences that were that were uh, different than the Onimus, you know, but of course they were working with the Onimus. They were actually Actually, they're they're Armenians. You know, we were fighting a group of beings known as the uh, Omicrons, uh, which was like a very advanced cybernetic race. Uh, there was also a group of beings known as the Borg, uh, and then in some cases, some huge electrical uh, cybernetic uh, beings that were that looked like dark clouds, and they were huge. So, and then of course, a lot of the spider, the black spiders. The black spiders were actually one of our our biggest foes. You know, um, they were used in many universes to just kind of pop into reality and literally just terraform a planet in days. And so, our job was to uh, pretty much nuke them, <laughs> nuke them with a, a different type of EMP that we generated through our bodies, uh, being jacked to about sixty to sixty-five percent of our genetic power, our well, genetic well, material. Would you consider these spider beans were they actual archons? like uh, negative entities that control the this ai matrix that we we, we occupy or are we talking about physical reality like nanobots uh nanobots? well they're one and the same because all artificial intelligence is uh controlled by archon energy that's the the consciousness that embodies all ai so yeah it's we were definitely fighting um the archon energy through the artificial intelligence so whether in the form of a spider or big huge dark electrical clouds that were conscious you know sentient but with no emotion of course uh and um other other entities and so i i started having you know dreams of like flying and stuff and just like popping into the okay so what would happen is we would meet uh, for a preliminary in Jupiter, okay? And after everybody gave us the blessing, all the representatives from the many galaxies who were actually calling us, you know, the hope, they were saying, you guys are the hope of the multiverse, this and that. We were actually teleported. Um, and how they would do it is they would plug in a, uh, what is called a cosmic stargate number. So um, how that works is like, you know, the, the entire multiverse is divided into seven segments. Each segment is a considered a super universe. So our local universe is located within the seventh segment known as Orvington, um, according to these records. And so 
our job was to uh, secure and restore the cosmic minor sector of Ezra, which uh, occupies over 200,000 organized local universes. So out of those 200,000 organized local universes, about one third were afflicted by this AI. And, you know, many, unfortunately, uh, many, many galaxies were destroyed in the process. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of galaxies that were destroyed. And so what we would do is they would, we would teleport by plugging in the Stargate, depending on, the, you know, the universe we were going into. So let's just say that, uh, so that what they would do is they, they would first plug in seven, which is the seven super universe. And then they would plug in five because we're part of the fifth major sector within the seven super universe. And then they would plug in three because we're part of the third minor sector known as Ezra. Uh, and then of course they would plug in the local universe. So since we're universe number 84, they would plug in like universe number 133 or universe number 78 or universe number 13. And just by plugging in these numbers, uh, we would open up a portal from from uh, Jupiter and directly just access. You know, within two seconds, we would uh, open up the portal and transfer ourselves into the these other universes within the minor cosmic sector of Ezra within seconds. And I just remember uh, just being like 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 strapped, like almost like we were we were about to you know go off into war and stuff, and just flying in these huge uh, huge motherships and just being strapped i'm sorry they weren't motherships i'm sorry i'm my bad they were actually ships that housed about uh, 100 individuals but they were pretty big craft but the reason i said motherships is because i do remember that in the jupiter base there was a lot of motherships that were in the uh, inner structure of jupiter that were kind of like hovering over the entire intergalactic meetings that were taking place there and so what we would do is we would pop into these other universes uh, and then we would locate the certain galaxies and planets that were being mostly afflicted and we and we would plug in their their uh, stargate numbers uh each planet and each galaxy each constellation has a Stargate number, and then we would access those particular realms, and then we would just clean house. And I just remember just coming back and everybody like patting us on the back saying, oh, wow, you guys did it again. Thank you so much. Now we secured, you know, um, universe, blah, 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 uh, in, in, you know, the constellation, blah, 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 and, and so many planets, you know, and you guys did it again. Thank you so much. You know, this was, this was very, very, uh, uh, crucial, you know, that, that we can, that we were successful in this operation. Uh, and so I just remember having dreams like that. So I used to think I was, you know, going crazy at first. And, uh, and then I, I heard Randy Kramer say radiant guardians. And when I heard his interview, uh, I totally just, it just made me just think like, what if I was part of the program? What if I was part of Radiant Guardians, you know, with everything that my mother told me about, um, you know, me having missing time, um, you know, having these visions and these memories that are slowly coming back. Um, I, I felt like, hey, you know, it's probably, is there any way to access all my memories? Because from what I understand, James, uh, they do blank slate us, right? That's what they do. Okay, so I figured that that's what they did because, you know, I, I just remember glimpses. I don't really have full recollection of everything in detail, but I believe that the time is coming where we're actually going to access all our information once again and then be able to, like, write books, you know, <laughs> in detail about this stuff. Can you describe the portal? What The like, portal? What like, even, like, when you're traveling through it and what it looked like when it opened up in front of you. It, it, it was very... Uh, kind of like in the movie Mar Dr. Strange, you know, the, it, it just open up just like a circle. They would use a technology device to open up the circle. The circle would literally just like a, like a, it would just literally just like, just open up. And then, you know, it was maybe this about 12 inches. I mean, 12 feet in diameter going um, in, in circle circumference wise. And I just remember it was just opened and all of us, like 100 of us would just go right through it. And then that's how we were able to go to any particular world. You know, they would just plug in the Stargate number and we we'd ha we had access to any universe, any planet, any galaxy at will. And when you when you showed up on the other side, um, were these all oxygen planets? Or were uh, well, because we were genetically enhanced to use 60 to 65% of our full genetic material, uh, we were able to operate uh, in on planets that were uh, some of them were nitrogen um, mainly dominated you know some of them uh, were methane so we were able to actually coexist and some of them were actually water worlds where we actually were able to live inside water um so it was kind of interesting according were, to my memories yeah were, were there any concerns about bringing back viruses or any contamination from you know bacterial logical yeah. 
Organization. Yes, there was. Yeah. Well, it turns out that uh, a lot of the uh, universes and galaxies that were afflicted by the AI, uh, many of the species uh, were infested with uh, what I guess what Corey could would call nanites. So that that's that's an issue, you know. So we would go through this like cleansing device um, to pretty much clear not only our physical bodies but our etheric bodies as well, you know, because there's such thing such thing uh, as as uh, etheric STDs <laughs> or astral STDs. And so they, we would go through this cleansing device that would actually just kind of cleanses physically, astrally, and etherically. From any, you know, nanotech, any type of uh, negative technology. Well, I mean, the only thing I could comment about that is that uh, apparently, you know, um, Umbrella Corporation, another alternate re reality, was uh, going to other planets, grabbing bacteriological on um, organisms for to create the Ouroboros, which is the zombie virus. But uh, that 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 actually G virus came from off world, where it was combined with AI and uh, microorganisms but um yeah i was just concerned you know concerned <laughs> that you might might have got but i guess they have advanced healing medical healing technology or perhaps you you said you were in the sixth dimension so maybe it didn't affect you like it would here in third third dimension earth but um okay well i mean i mean we operated all the way up until the uh from what i recall up to the eighth dimension because you know physicality exists all the way to the 12th dimension it's just a different type of matter it's more of a refined based matter more crystalline oriented so let's go into a dip. Let's just go discuss a difference between Solar Warden, Radiant Guardian, and Radiant Glory. Why don't you give us a little rundown of what you think the three groups are about? Okay, so Solar Warden is uh, operational within our galaxy and our local universe. Um, we have, uh, I think, over 100 bases uh, throughout the Milky Way. And uh, I think, what is it, 900 to 1,000 colonies just within our solar system? And growing by the day uh so yeah that's what solar warden is doing you know solar warden was also um developed by by the federation in collaboration with our navy uh and of course the white hats uh in order to uh counter um attack and and the dark fleets and the interplanetary corporate conglomerate who are, are actually more aligned with the draco and so from what, I, from what I understand is that Solar Warden is not only our interplanetary police force, uh, but is also throughout our galaxy known as the, um, the, the galactic police force, you know, <laughs> because we, we do have the most advanced genetics in the multiverse. As you know, we are galactic royalty, and, and this is uh, evidence is confirmed by Alex Collier and other contactees. And so what they did is, uh, is in Solar Warden is they, they enhanced genetics to about maybe about 10 to 15 percent, but that was sufficient enough to uh, reclaim the victory against the Draco in our galaxy. And of course, you know, many of those soldiers were sent to Orion because Orion has been a huge hotspot for this galactic war with the Draco. And I, and I think just recently, a lot of our soldiers from Solar Warden just returned, I think, within the last two years when they secured the war in Orion was, is that correct, James? Are we talking about Hammerhead, the uh, maximum security prison, the Draco one? Do they go in there and rescue people? Is that, uh, cause that's where they would take a lot of the people that were involved in the Orion wars. Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. But, but you are aware though, right? That we've won the war in Orion already, right? Um, I thought it happens in 2023. Well, I guess since all time is happening at once, I guess in, in, in terms of that, yes, it's, it's, but you know, the victory is ours. I mean, we do have the upper hand. I thought it happened in, in, in uh, last year in 2021. I thought that's when uh, uh, our super soldiers returned from Orion. Hmm. But uh, you could be right. You know, it well, could I be 2023. Johan, Johan Fritz was talking a little bit about uh, Hammerhead and the, 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 that particular war between Solar Warden. And I guess that's when actually the, the Alliance was, well, I mean, the Alliance, I guess theoretically exists now, but the, the schism of Dark Fleet breaks off, where a third of Dark Fleet breaks away, with mm -hmm. in conjunction with Solar Warden over this AI contamination issue with the elite officers. Exactly. Um, so is is that also what's connected with this war in Orion too? They were also fighting that as well. Yes, yes, because Orion was actually taken over by AI. I don't know if you recall. You know, and and what's been running Orion even above the Draco is what they call the Red Queen. And so I, I, I believe that that's, uh, that's what we've been fighting pretty much in our galaxy. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. I know the red queen has come in, been mentioned before. Um, she is really nasty. Um, Very nasty. And in fact, a lot of the, uh, 
um, gray human hybrids that they created here in our planet since the 60s were actually taken to Orion to be part of the Borg hive mind controlled by the by the Red Queen. And they believe that uh, the only reason they took them there and they took some of our genetics was because sometime in the near future, they're, they're planning on sending these hybrids back to the Earth to conquer the Earth. But of course, we're not going to let that happen, right, James? <laughs> we're going to be ready for them. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to need uh, there are a lot of super soldiers out there. Uh, yeah. Even when disclosure takes place, this is not going. <laughs> soon. But um, all right. Well, let's talk. Um, so so now the difference between Solar Warden, you know, going back to your question, is that uh, Radiant Guardians is actually um, operational in the multiverse. So it goes beyond our galaxy and our local universe, and and that's uh, from that's everything I know. It's just that we've been fighting wars in other universes. You know, as far as like knowing things in detail. Um, I'm yet to get my memories back. I'm hoping soon, though, because I, I really want to write a book about this. Okay. Well, what I put in my book about uh, Radiant Glory and Radiant Guardian is that, well, first of all, Solar Warden was founded, um, well, I'm going to say founded, but uh, the term was created during the era of, of Reagan, of Star Wars, and uh, that whole initiative. But um, it actually existed prior to that. Um, I don't remember the exact name of the project, but... Uh, from there, um, Solar Warden split off into two different groups. Initially, it was Radiant Guardian, where Solar Warden would patrol the area from the sun to the Oort cloud. In the 1990s, Solar Warden was divided in half, where Radiant Guardian patrols the sun to Mars, and mm -hmm. Mars Ring asteroid belt, rather. And Radiant Glory was tasked with patrolling the region from Mars Ring to the end of our solar system near the Helosphere or out towards the Oort cloud. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess theoretically, so that means Radiant Guardian is really a subdivision of Solar Warden. I believe so. Yes. And then there's even a, um, I guess a, a program, a, a, a even more subdivisional program that was used that was actually left off the records. Um, and I believe that, um, there's only, only about a hundred individuals were part of that program. And the only reason from what my mother told me is that the only reason they picked her was because she carried a very high concentration of RH negative blood type, which is the universal donor. Yeah. I think she was the AB negative. I'm not sure. It's the most rare one out of all the RH negatives. All right. So we got, okay. So at that point, um, the task of Radiant Guardian, Radiant Glory, uh, according to notes that I wrote here, is that they're, they're tasked with patrolling the areas, making sure different um, groups have supplies. They also make sure everybody's getting along. Um, and if we have like a comet or asteroid, they, they're responsible for taking care of that as well. But you're, oh, saying, yeah. Yeah. you're saying that it was primarily the AI is what your, your main focus was. Yes. At least yes. your team. Okay. Um, so let's discuss a little bit about the uh, of course with, with um there is dark fleet out there and that would be the more i guess you could say more negatively aligned um in azi <laughs> draco they they embed uh draco officers on all their ships at least until the schism takes place uh exactly. the officers are required to, to drink black goo yes um, they are so what about on solar warden were any of the officers contaminated with black goo do you happen to um, I, I don't have any information on that, but I do believe, according to some uh, testimonies that I heard, that uh, some of the officers or some of the soldiers were contaminated, and they actually had to, you know, get rid of uh, of, of the black goo that was in their body. I, I, I've heard rumors, but not that I can confirm, you know, so, personally. Yeah. So theoretically, um, you can't really get rid of black goo, which you have to do is you have to kill the person and then reanimate the body and bring the soul back uh, oh so, i didn't know that yeah that's interesting that's, oh wow that's, yeah that's according cool. to peter the insider interesting um but uh so um another person but, go ahead oh i just wanted to uh, interject that uh, a, a splinter group of dark fleet actually joined the ai in, in other universes and now uh, they're building a vast uh, okay so basically at the highest level of this ai war we have omega omega is the dark lord um i'm just revealing the name of the ai god I'm sorry <laughs> hopefully <laughs> that's not too much but um they they recruited a good portion of the dark fleet to go be part of the of what is known as the phantom matrix multiverse which is a totally uh different multiverse that was actually developed by by the AI himself, where they actually were able to assimilate our version of or our organic multiverse and digitally, you know, 
um, create their own version, uh, their own personal version of a multiverse, but it's an inorganic one. It's a multiverse that is inhabited by mechanical beings, androids. There is no biological life force. And so what Omega has been doing at the highest level uh, of of reality is that he's been using a Darth Star Mechaba, a Death Star Mechaba in in the uh, in, in, in as a, as a black hole. In other words, to suck up universal life force from the organic living universes in order to power up his his phantom matrix. So in a way, he's been um, this AI depends on our energy in order for for its phantom matrix to continue existing. So that's the only reason why it didn't destroy all the multiverse is because it feeds off of our energy in order to power its own multiverse, which is full of cybernetic intelligences. So the, there's going to be one final war, James, in the future. And I think it takes place after a thousand years. I think after the you know the solar flash takes place, we become upgraded. Uh, you know, there's a new age here. And we become reinstated back to the galactic community, right? First contact takes place, all of that. I think there's going to be at about a thousand years of peace. And then after that, we're going to, you know, there's going to be a final clash against the dark fleet and the the cybernetic phantom metrics multiverse and that's going to be a huge war involving everybody in our universe not just the super soldiers everyone of course we're going to be at the forefront of that but i do believe we win that war wow yeah someone was actually asking that question uh do we eventually go to war with dark fleet so that it would be yes. uh okay well, well we'll deal with that when the time comes um of course, there is time travel involved, and probably the people from that future timeline are, are sending their their soldiers back in time. Um, maybe that's you <laughs> back in time. Yeah, I do. I do feel like I, I'm actually from the, the future. <laughs> I, I just wish I could remember the mission. <laughs> I'm almost there, though. I'm getting tidbits here and there. <laughs> All right. So, comments. Uh, so, um, yeah. In my book, I mentioned the Omega Project, and that's what they call this whole New World Order agenda. But it's actually, it's quite um, enlightening to hear what you said about the AI, because that actually makes sense. Where the wing makers were sending their uh, tranches of technology back in time to be discovered by the ACIO to fight the Animus, and um, here we are um, in this uh, whole cycle. But um, we also got uh, so, so somebody was asking about. Um, uh, the reason why Dark Fleet officers would consume black goo, um, one of the reasons is is because um, out there in the universe, the average IQ of many of these advanced extraterrestrials is around 700 to 800. And, of course, uh, IQ has to do with standard deviation, so that's just way, uh, way off the charts. Um, the uh, Dark Fleet officers, usually they, they have technology to enhance your IQ 150 to 200. Um, so with the black goo, they can bring that up to about close to 400. But they're still basically dummies out there. But um, So there's an incentive to increase your intelligence, increase your, um, well, I was going to say, I was going to say intuitive abilities, but uh, I would say black goo would probably shut that down because it takes away your connection from your heart chakra. Um, you connect to God's source, but you're more intelligent, but you're, yeah, you're like a Borg. Um, anyway, uh, so, uh, I, oh, the other thing I want to mention is, is Tron. Uh, word has got back to me that there is a, a parallel universe that is like the movie Tron where everything is digital, um, AI, but it's, it's positive. Do you think that's possible? There might be a positive AI universe out there. Control no. and it's controlled no. by this Lord Metatron. Is that no? Okay. Yeah, it's actually you know it's funny that you mentioned Metatron because the the second name to Omega is Metatron because Metatron the original authentic Metatron is the giver of life. He's the one who uh, through geometry uh, sets the actual blueprint for universes to come into existence. Whereas Omega, the reason he calls himself Omega Metatron is because that means the destroyer of life. So while Meta or the original Metatron gives life. Omega Metatron destroys it. So it's again, it's that cosmic duality with AI. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I guess without trying to get another strike on this channel, the uh, Jabiru people were supposed to be going to that negative timeline. And uh, those yeah. who, who took the boost, boosteroos, then they're probably, they're checking out. So um, do you have, um, do you have any information on whether or not, because I believe we're on a positive timeline. Do you think that the alliance is going to stop stop that from happening? Uh, 
release technologies to help these people before this, what do you call it, the solar flash takes place? That's the clue. That's the plan. You know, from what I understand, according to my research, it takes about three to four years for the uh, nanotech in people's body to totally take over their, their minds or central nervous systems and absolutely just conquer them mentally, or they become, you know, like, like zombies. Uh, it, it's a, it's a three to four year process. So uh, it's been two years uh, since they've administrated the medicine. And so I believe that, uh, yeah, it's, it's in the positive timeline. I think, I believe that the Alliance and the Y hats are going to come in strong and uh you know bring about the disclosure and and and, and right in the nick of time uh, bring forth these healing modalities that is totally going to neutralize the uh you know the poison and and also another another thing that uh, i believe that could happen that um, will totally uh save these people from entering the uh, again the you know phantom matrix timeline which they don't want to end up in um is the solar flash which is going to act as a huge emp uh, that is uh, not only going to have an effect here on our world, but from what I understand, it's also going to have an effect throughout the multiverse coming from this world. So that's that's another interesting theory that I've been hearing about. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes down, James. But I do I do know that uh, in the positive timeline, the forces of light have won the war. Uh, I also know that in the future, the metahumans do win the war against Omega and the Dark Fleet and you know the entire cybernetic collective and. Um, and it's not all coming into play here in the present. You know, it's all coming. It's all just trickling down here in the present. All right. Well, this might tie into this question. Maybe, maybe it doesn't. Uh, um, SSP personnel will get their memories back around 2026 to 2027. Uh, what do you think might happen around that period of time? Hopefully by no later than 2028, we could have this, this grand solar flash. That's my hope because, you know, <laughs> How much longer can humanity take, you know, the abuse? So you don't ever expect, I don't know, a, 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 how about say a website being set up of all our files being put on there and then we could log on and find out, oh, I was on in the SSP after I didn't, I guess. I, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that in, in, in the uh, positive timeline, when disclosure takes place, um, you know, all that stuff will be restored to us. But I think that we're, we're also going to be getting memories. Our memories are going to be coming back to us, James, along with those files, of course. You know, those files are just going to be there to back it up. All right. And this is where I have this question. Uh, full public disclosure. Do you think the government will come out and finally say, oh, by the way, <laughs> we have a secret space fleet? <laughs> we're heading there. We're yeah. heading there. Yeah, Paul Hellier, the uh, Prime Minister of uh, Space Defense of Canada, already came forward. Uh, is it uh, the the Israeli ex space uh, head of command? Uh, what's his name? Ashmed, Ash, Ashaim Ashmed or something? He came forward, uh, I think, uh, two years ago. So it's 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 prepping there, you know. So. All right. Let's get in. Okay. Well, so I think uh, you you mentioned this uh, um, off camera. How many 20 year and back missions have you done? I believe three. Yes. Cause there's three instances in my life where I felt missing time. And I believe that had a lot to do with this. Yeah. Yeah. So typically right after they return you on a, a 20 year and back, you would, um, you would be extremely exhausted for about three days. And, um, I noticed one time I just had dinner and then next thing I know, I felt like I haven't eaten in three weeks. And I was so exhausted for the next couple of days. So, um, yeah, so that might be a, a sign that you might have been involved in this. Um, do you have any anything you might want to comment on that? But you noticed um, after you were returned? Just that um, I didn't remember anything. It's almost like I had no recollection of how I ended up there. <laughs> That's all I remember. But I do, and now that you bring a, bring it up, I do remember feeling very lethargic at the same time for a couple of days. I do remember that now that you bring it up. Do you have any information on the, um, the process of actually how they blank slate you? Um, I have no recollection. I have no recollection, yeah, but I believe that, that this is a technology that was developed by the ACIO uh, in collaboration with the Cordium. 
So um, I don't know if that was ne for nefarious reasons, because the original purpose of developing blank slate technology was to blank slate the animus upon their revival, not to you know use it upon humans. But I did I do believe that they used it on humans, especially those that served within the program, because they already had it. Uh, how they used it, I don't know, but it works, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Yeah, well, I noticed a lot of SSP experiencers. That's, uh, of course, blank slating is, you know, they're not going to necessarily remember the blank slating because they, <laughs> everything else has been wiped. That's like the last thing you remember. Is, um, but typically, uh, so the people that do recall it under regression, um, they're put into some kind of bed or a tank. Um, they're required to st sit still for um, up to seven up to seven days. I think it's uh, – yeah, uh, your age drops back 10 years for every week you're in there. So if you were 20 years, you might be in there for two weeks. Other times they might have a clone body. So they would put you into stasis and send you off world. And then um, at the end of your service, the clone would be expired and send you back. Um, that would be the case, you know, like, cause you, I think you said you were in enhanced bodies at that, um, mm -hmm. like avatars. Do you, do you recall being cloned out, being put into tanks and going, no, I don't remember any of that. And, and from my from what my mother said, she says that um, that my my I guess the way they made me was um, where they didn't have to clone me. Uh, oh no, she said I was unclonable. That's what she told me. She goes, they and they never cloned you. They couldn't clone you because of the types of genetics or DNAs that they gave you. It's impossible to clone this type of genetic material. That's what she's used to tell me. So I don't know how they did it with me. I think they they used a very highly advanced technology where they would actually just put you in a chamber and literally just regenerate your body back to what you were before they took you, which was a, a better way than just cloning you. Because then, you know, cloning you, it, it, it inquires extrapolating your consciousness from one avatar to the next. And that's just, you know, lower, lower uh, technology. Well, but yeah. but the, the on the other hand, if you were not went on a mission and you died, and they re needed to reanimate you somehow, they would they would want to have cloning material. A clone, yeah. Back. And and some people actually didn't come back. Um, they might have been purposely killed, like airlocked. They were mm -hmm. they just went, went crazy. They were a bunch of assholes, and when they were sent back, uh, they send the clone back that doesn't have the soul and it quickly dies. It deteriorates. Um. There are cases like that, but um, I'm glad. But in, in my case, because I was, uh, you know, I guess uh, enhanced to 60 to 65% of my full genetic material, uh, my body was made indestructible. For those that served, you know, in, in my group, well, we were all made indestructible. Yeah. Tell us more about how they enhanced your ability. So like, well, we, we we all we all had a nickname, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, they used to call me the Kryptonian. <laughs> you know, everybody had a nickname, um, just like you had a nickname. So, um, because we we were using uh, adamantium particles, um, which is very advanced crystalline genetic structure, um, our bodies were very, very um, to the point where they were equivalent to vibranium. You know, a bomb can destroy it. No laser, no weapon uh, out there could destroy the type of the, your physicality at that level of of percentage. It's it's totally indestructible. And um, I do remember that. So, um, yeah, I, you know, we all had a nickname and stuff. So I was the Kryptonian, you know, and everybody else had a different name. <laughs> so they, they gave us these, I guess they adopted the nicknames from the comics, you know. But uh, again, you know, there's a lot of truth to those comics, James, when you consider that the people who actually wrote DC and Marvel were actually insiders back in the 50s. And they, they were, you know, part of these ultra secret meetings. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to look up. Um, what was the name of the material that <laughs> was in the pre? That oh gosh, I was trying. Oh, yeah. the adamantium particles. Uh, pre is uh, comes from the the rings of Saturn, and it's a metal that's uh, your body treats it like gold, but it's harder than diamonds. Uh, it's also got chameleon class uh, technology capabilities, so uh, they would replace the bones of pre metal. And then uh, clone tissue over it. Well, I, I guess you said you weren't cloned out, but um, mm -hmm. theoretically, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they would have to mod, but they probably would have had. You said they did. They didn't modify you with with femtonites because they didn't want you to in interface with AI. They wanted you to be a crystal. I guess upgrade your DNA to be more a crystalline being. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I do remember operating uh, in multiple dimensions. Like I was able to master and control gravity and everything time, you know, I was able to manipulate reality at will at 60 to 65%, kind of like in the movie Lucy with uh, Scarlett Johansson. I mean, it was literally like that for us. And do you think uh, these abilities might cross over into your uh, civilian life eventually? Come back I to you? Sure, I sure hope so. I'm working on that. <laughs> um, they, I mean, they would have had looking glass technology, I assume, where they could look into the future, glimpses of it, and see the potential reality of what might happen. Did they? Did, was that ever a concern to them? That suddenly their super soldiers assets became fully aware. Well, because of the the purpose and mission that we served, uh, we actually have um, very highly security. Uh, we're very well protected. I was told. Um, you know, we're, our protection not just not just comes from you know the Pleiadians and the Federation, right? Our protection comes from beings beyond them. And so because we're that important to the cosmos and because of what we we did for the cosmos, uh, they're actually securing us so that when the time comes, you know, when when the time comes for our dormant DNA to come online, um, uh, these these abilities are going to come right back, which is going to be cool because I, I was told that I was also going to be used in the last war against AI. That's going to take place in, in about a thousand years. Okay. So obviously, I'm not going to die, <laughs> and you're you neither. By the way, we're you know we're we're going to live forever. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's go into maybe you can. Um, I wanted to go into a little bit earlier. An ultra soldier. What? Uh, how would you define an ultra soldier of the radiant guardian variety? The the ultra soldiers are are the ones that are the most advanced. You know, there there was a, there were the ones that were enhanced. Uh, to over 60%, I think 60 to 65%. That's what makes an ultra so, uh, soldier from a regular super soldier. A super soldier, I think they were, the most they've ever, ever enhanced a super soldier is up to like 25 to 30%. And that allowed them to have, you know, telekinesis, uh, psychic powers, precogs, you know, uh, uh, straight out telepaths where they could just read and sense things, uh, capable of, of observing it, data and information where they could walk into a room and tell you exactly what every person is doing, all hundreds of them uh, within a you know a second, which is a, a type of perception that allows you to capture everything like in pictures. So I, I, I do know that um, there's different, there was different levels of upgrades and each, um, which gave us a different categories from, you know, regular super soldiers to elite super soldiers to ultra super soldiers. So those that's the spectrum. And how would um, the uh, Radiant Guardian ultra soldiers compare to, say, some of the ultra soldiers? I guess they would have had leaks of that and over a dark fleet. Um, I mean, there would be different types. Well, the Dark Fleet developed their own versions of uh, Ultra Soldiers, you know, Human 3.0s by mixing and merging with AI. So some of the uh, members of the Dark Fleet uh, w became extremely powerful, but again, you know, they merged with the tech. And so they're, they're now like cyborgs, but they're extremely powerful because not only are they using gen uh, human genetics uh, at like 60 to 65%, but they're also dealing with uh, AI genetics as well, or AI, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, digital <laughs> cybernetic information yeah it almost sounds like they're a whole new new life form already <laughs> they are and they're they're actually causing an issue for for the living cosmos so like i said that's going to be one last battle that we're going to have to uh clash in eventually or be involved in okay and um i guess the other comment i wanted to make about the uh the leak sadat and leak sadat and are um super soldiers that were created by the germans and um they took dna from the original atlantean race mm -hmm. that uh, can live up to 120,000 years and they can create these hybrids in these cloning vats it takes about 20 days to grow a clone up to full age and they just stop aging they, they don't age at all well i mean i guess it takes 120,000 years but i mean they practically don't age um so uh that would be, I guess, is that the destiny of humanity to, to be have our blueprint DNA returned back to the way it was? Uh, absolutely. Atlantis? Yeah, absolutely. Because in our original makeup, when we were first developed, we were developed as a the most hybridized race in the multiverse using 12 strands of, of DNA. We were, you know, designed to achieve levels of power that no other species out there could achieve. And so that's why we became like the most, I guess, coveted race in the multiverse. Yeah, our genetics is, is priceless. 
So this is a comment. Um, Allison, uh, yeah, so something right out of Star Trek and Star Wars. I would comment in further and say neither of those two are getting it right. Star Wars, they, they don't show the cloning, the reaging tech. Star Wars doesn't do I'm sorry, Star Trek, actually both of them don't do it. They don't show you the, the extent of the medical healing technology that that the real re reality is much more advanced. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that was left out in those movies. However, those movies are also uh, very uh, educational as far as them being more documentaries and just sci-fi. A lot of hitting knowledge in those movies. Uh, this came up in the chat. <laughs> Does uh, is there a FedEx in outer space? Do they deliver in outer space? It's no, no, it doesn't happen that way in outer space. Okay, somebody should send a memo. <laughs> and done. Okay, uh, so let's go on the next question here. Um. Okay, so let's see here. How about this? Uh, can, do you have any information about any treaties between the ICC, which is the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, or Dark Fleet with the Alliance? Are they, are they the, the, running the show? No, 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 no they're, 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 they're completely separated. You know, the, uh, the Alliance is totally uh, opposite to the agenda of the Dark Fleet and the uh, Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate. However, there was a there was uh, a splinter of the alliance that actually uh, did form a treaty with the Dark Fleet and the interplanetary, interplanetary corporate conglomerate, but they're going to be dealt with very soon. They're going to be dealt with. But it was just a small percentage of, of, of traitors. Yeah, this actually, I, I was, I wanted to tie that question into the Star Trek question because in our future is Star Trek, but way more advanced. <laughs> and um, the name that I actually got was uh, well, at least a possibility is High Fleet Command or Star Fleet Command. Uh, do you have any information about uh, what the secret space program, well, I guess it won't be secret in the future, might look like? Uh, yes, from what I understand is that Space Force um, and Solar Warden are going to merge. And uh, they're going to be called, I think they're going to be called... Uh, not star. Yeah. I do understand. They gave, they gave me the symbol, which is like, it's kind of like a, like that, but with a circle around it. And it's like blue with yellow. It's like a, bl a yellow light, yellow circle with blue around it. And like a yellow cross representing the four quadrants of the universe and how the earth is going to now be the new guardian, uh, at the center of the entire universe, which is awesome. Um, I, I can't remember the name of it, but yes, I, I do see emerging coming with Space Force leading the way. And then, of course, you know, bringing forth uh, the technology that's been used with Solar Warden and stuff. And of course, you know, taking us into a Star Trek reality where, you know, we're going to the entire the human race here on this planet is going to actually, you know, be scattered all throughout the galaxy, which is awesome. <laughs> that's going to solve the population issue, of course. <laughs> And also, they'll start building. Uh, there'll be uh, flying platforms. Then eventually, uh, you have you can build a house on it. Then you can build a city on it. And then the flying platforms can go out in outer space. And then, um, yeah, and then planet Earth will be kept as a, a nature preserve on the surface. Okay, uh, so let's go to how about this? Some of the technology that you've encountered off world. What can you tell us? What what is it like out there? A lot of the technology that I've encountered was uh, was living. It was like a bio substance that was alive, um, where the intelligences were actually in a symbiotic way, were were consciously infusing themselves with the uh, you know crystals or the stones or whatever it is that they were using to uh, you know they, they were using them as tech. You know, it was living technology. So, um, including their, their spacecraft, a lot of the spacecrafts were actually telepathically in, commu in communion with the person that was piloting them. And so it, it was amazing how they were able to communicate as if the spacecraft was an extension of their consciousness. It was beautiful. Uh, you know, some of this tech is just beyond our comprehension. So, Dark Fleet got their technology primarily by attacking innocent aliens and stealing their tech. There was also trades with the MMF, the Merchant Marine Fleet, where they would go around, kidnap humans on planet Earth, trade them to aliens with their own cybernetic units and uh, regen tanks so they live forever, and uh, replicate or defeat them. Uh, and they trade them off as slaves in, in exchange for technology. So that's how Dark Fleet became so advanced so quickly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So the warden, I'm assuming, would in order to um because there is this um there's still like this uh this issue with between because you got the Nazis <laughs> down in Antarctica who are run controlling Dark Fleet, and now you got the Americans running the Solar Warden program, and there's still like a conflict going on here. But um how did Solar Warden get all their advanced technology? Did they make a deal with the positive ETs like the Galactic Federation and this and they just they just handed it over without you know trade because typically you know DNA is the, the trade um, the currency of the universe exactly especially our DNA you know they they've been selling our DNA throughout the galactic uh, slave trade for for actually uh, centuries they just you know we're just now catching on to that but yeah they've been abducting us for you know for hundreds and hundreds of years yeah but, but well, um, yeah how does Solar Warden acquire their technology? So quick. by the Federation, because what happened was, okay, from what I understand is that the Federation first secured the Galactic Wars when they first won the battle in Orion uh, 12, 15,000 years ago. But then what happened was a, a group of the Draco Empire traveled into the future in order to recruit uh, members of our race to genetically enhance them and, of course, mix them with the cyborg or with the AI to become cyborgs to go back in time and re-win the war against the Federation. And then so that's when the Federation also traveled back in time, popped into our reality in the 1950s, developed Solar Warden to counter-effect that. <laughs> and so a lot of this has to do with time travel. <laughs> You know, so, so yeah, so definitely we Solar Warden developed or uh, received the technology by the Federation and the good benevolent forces to counteract what Dark Fleet was doing with the Draco. All right. Okay. Um, so let's go into uh, Cordium and the Labyrinth group. So is this connected? Is this the group that actually is traveling back in time, giving technology? I do believe that, yes, the Cordium is a group that has been using a lot of time travel to give us the technology. So I think that they're, they're the ones that are actually the depository of, of uh, intergalactic records. Um, and, you know, some of them are, are, are related to, uh, to a lot of uh, rogue, in, uh, rogue extraterrestrials, uh, especially from like, uh, like the Evens and stuff, you know, uh, like the Naboo uh, and, and those that are in, involved with the uh, hybridization programs involving human genetics and Zetas and Grace. So um, the Cordium is definitely not, not good. It's totally, it's very, very malicious. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so, but Labyrinth, so, let, let, okay, this is what I wrote in my book here. Uh, Labyrinth group are a group within the alien contact intelligence organization that communicate with different extraterrestrial groups, including Numbers Group, Council of Five, and Cordium. They are tasked with helping maintain intergalactic security for these groups. Yes. Numbers groups has actual no agenda because each group has their own different agenda, but they act like an overseeing intergalactic council like the UN on, is on planet Earth. The Council of Five guard this region of space to which our solar system also belongs. Mm -hmm. And there's a, um, the number, uh, the Council of Five represent Orella, or Irigot, Genovas, Redons, and Merthers. And then I wrote the uh, information about the Cordium is very secretive. <laughs> about this time. Very secret. Yeah, that's why they have the Labyrinth Group because only members of the Labyrinth Group have access to the Cordium. You know, even people that are, um, because it's very compartmentalized, you know, even people that are below the labyrinth group, like those that are elite scientists within the ACIO have no clue of what's really happening. All they know is that they have, they, they inherited this advanced technology and they, all they have to do is take orders from the labyrinth group because those are their masters, you know, but in turn, the labyrinth group is taking orders from the Cordium, which is unfortunate. Are, are you familiar with the Republic of the ACIO? No, I'm not familiar with them. Actually, it's the first time I've heard it. Uh, well, looking into the origins of the ACIO through remote viewing, we see that there's a it com they come from another universe, and um, they, uh, from that timeline, they call themselves the Republic of the ACIO. But hmm. um, yeah, the, the head of the ACIO appears to be some kind of AI infected entity, and it's not necessarily positive, which makes makes you know, if it almost feels like the ACIO is more more neutral here in this timeline but maybe it's becoming more positive I, I don't know but um from your perspective it would be positive because the wing makers are the ico is working to extract that technology and to help humanity so anyway all right well let's uh i guess let, let's move on to another question here um so 
why don't you tell us what do you think will happen in SSP disclosure or a first contact like event? What do you think it would be like? I think many ships are going to appear worldwide, especially over huge cities, motherships. Um, and I also believe that the uh, alliance is going to uh, broadcast through the airwaves what's happening, you know, um, getting humanity ready for first contact. And I also believe that um, the Mr. T and, you know, um, <clears throat> JFK, you know, the son that faked his death, are going to be uh, with Commander Valiant Thor, who is the uh, representative of the Venetian Council, who's who's actually working with the Alliance and the Federation, he's a liaison, um, is going to uh, make some announcements. Uh, and and uh, that's uh, that's from what I that's what I've been told that it's gonna it's gonna be like mass sightings. Um, you know, the cabal is going to be exposed. This is after the EBS, after, you know, they initiate the new programs uh, that is going to bring the wealth back to the people. Then they're going to prepare people for first contact. And I do believe that Commander Valiant Thor will be at the White House uh, streaming with Mr. T and uh, JFK Jr. And at that point, uh, will he be the president of the world? They'll disband the United States and create like a whole planetary governance? Uh, no, it's going to be um, – It's the current structure is going to shift into one of interplanetary structure comprised of 22 different federated regions. Yes, so he's going to be in charge of the American federated region, but there's going to be 22 others. And in turn, these two, uh, 22 federated regions are going to be under a new world council or new world structure, and at the head of the new world structure uh, are going to be – pretty much us you know the, the star seeds <laughs> and so that's what i was told that we're going to be in charge of the new new earth um apparently um i guess it was under guns and broad street australia was a sub corporation of the federal american empire does that mean australia is going to be part of that federated <laughs> united states are they going to be in the same federated region Yes, I actually uh, give a description of the 22 federated regions and the conglomeration of countries that are going to consolidate into different regions. In my book, Our Cosmic Origin, I do reveal like the, what the new world structure is going to look like for the next you know few thousand years. Well, what other what other countries will be part of the the, the American federated region? Uh, the American federated region is going to be called the Pe Peacock Federation, actually. <laughs> And so, um, you know, Canada is going to be a part of it, Mexico, uh, and I do believe Alaska. And then uh, there's going to be uh, 21 other federated regions yeah, as well. Awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's, uh, let's move on. Actually, there's some great questions in the chat, but um, I wanted to get through my questions first. Because sure. almost, I'm almost done here my list, and hopefully you're still good on your battery. Um, um, about 15%, yes. I should, oh, 20%, yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so... I guess, how about this one? Uh, do you have any information what would happen if AI was to take over a planet? Our planet? Yeah, on the negative time. Um, it's, it's okay, so, people that are dying. Right, right. Uh, um, in the event that the AI alters the timeline uh, and Omega makes his, his appearance as the Antichrist, uh, which is, by the way, AI, you know, that's... With, all the records were, when they prophesied about this antichrist they were talking about ai <laughs> um i do believe that at that point there's going to be some sort of divine intervention where a, a group of us especially you know the ones that were enhanced like yourself and myself are going to be um so there's going to be some sort of technology that's going to access or turn on our dna and turn on our abilities and at that point there's we're going to be the ones that are going to like uh, I guess pretty much save the world from this this invasion if 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 it goes into that timeline. Yes. So er everything's already been planned out by the higher ups. Like they've already, you know, they they've already checkmated Omega. <laughs> in other words, Omega. There's no way Omega is going to destroy this world because you know, in essence, this world is the most important world in the cosmos. But there there are a lot of people that are checking it out right now, and it looks like their souls are being captured and taken to a Earth 2.0, a, a clone, a copy of Earth to continue their experiment in th three-dimensional life. Um, do you have any information on what that earth is like for the people that are going there, these souls? Right, that's that's an alternative earth that was actually created through CERN. Through CERN has always been um, used by the dark side, you know, especially the negative AI. And so they're, they create an alternative version where they're actually trying to send people into that 
that alternative earth that is going to ultimately be dominated by AI, where smart cities are going to be, you know, everywhere worldwide, the internet of things, you know, you're going to be talking to your wall, your, your stove, your microwave. It's, it's, it's not a good world. It's a world where you're going to literally be living in, in such a virtual type of digital world that you won't be able to distinguish it from what was real anymore. It's going to be a, 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 a further matrix than the matrix that we're already existing in. <laughs> A type of matrix that is going to be impossible to exit once you're there. So, so when this solar flash takes place, does that mean, like, say, like the I don't know, George Soros will still be alive at that point? But um, you know, Bill, hopefully Gates, not. George Soros, would they uh, would they come along with us to the positive timeline, or would they just? Oh no, they're going to go into the negative timeline, or if not, dispersed. Yeah. So, from our perspective, they just disappear. Absolutely, yeah. Is that what the whole rapture thing was about in the Bible? Absolutely, yeah. That's that's symbolically speaking, yes. Hmm. One person will disappear, the other person will, you know, remain. <laughs> All right. Um, how about this guy? <laughs> Elon Musk. Is he a is he the saver of humanity or does he eventually is he a traitor and he goes to Dark Fleet? Um, ever since he began to uh, to create the Neuralace through his Neuralink company. Um, the whole purpose of that is to merge us with techno technology to make us cyborgs. And um, I was informed that he actually was the first one to implant the Neuralace. So he enhanced his own genetics and he's already a cyborg. And I also was informed that he was actually compromised by the AI. So he's him and, and the other tech companies are all working uh, with the AI, which is not good. And um, interesting, especially enough, Google. Google's leading this, you know, the whole this whole uh, AI thing is being led by Google itself. You know, some people believe that Google's already sentient. Do you think Google's going to survive into the solar flash? No, I think the you know the solar flash is going to act like an EMP and destroy the entire infrastructure of AI and. And it's not going to exist anymore. And in, in, in the ascending positive timeline, of course. Well, does that mean we're, we're going to be about power, electricity? Uh, we're going to be using a different type of power. We're going to be using free energy technology. We're going to be using planetary and star power or stellar power. But uh, but the grid is going to go down after the solar flash until it gets fixed. And it's going to be replaced. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's going to be replaced by a, a, a grid that is going to be operating on multi-dimensionals, multi-dimensional realities. I heard that the White Hats have, um, I don't know if it's kept an underground dumb or where the technology is, but they have ways of quickly converting every, within, it'll take about two weeks to get the new grid back up online. That could be a possibility. Yeah, I believe so. What about, uh, and this question has been coming up over and over again about med beds. Do you have any idea when that's going to be coming out to the public? Between, between now and 2024, I believe. Because uh, according to the vision that I had, 15 years ago, when I was connected to my galactic self, uh, which oversees a mothership uh, known as the New Jerusalem, uh, I was able to access like a future, like a frame, time frame where when the Earth was actually going to be reinstated back into the galactic community. And um, I was told by no later than 2024. So we'll see what happens. We're two years away. <laughs> I'm going to cross my fingers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know what? Um, before before I switch the topic, I want I was what one other thing I want to mention about Elon Musk, um, Neuralink. Um, was based, um, I think that company was based down in Texas and, uh, Monarch solutions has a base down a dumb in that same area where he's working closely. It's like a subdivision of Monarch. Um, so he's getting, uh, um, once you touch, once that technology touches your, your, um, your physical body, the nanites contaminate it. And so, um, yeah, don't, yeah, stay away from Neuralink, but, um, Okay, so I guess in the positive timeline, we don't have to get nanobots injected into us to interface with the internet and all that. We can. Yeah. Okay. All right. How? What's some information we can do to manifest the most positive timeline? To be in the here and the now, to uh, keep your awareness or at least be aware of your mind every second of the day, because mindfulness is uh, is our power. It's the way we co-create reality. Um, don't worry about the past. Don't have anxiety about the future. Uh, focus on what you want and always be in control of your mind because that's how we create reality. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, you're welcome. Now we're going into some questions. I guess some, there was a question about uh, crypto. Do you see crypto surviving into the, is that going to be their no. currency, the future? No, 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 no. That's, that was created by Sophia, the Android that was developed by Hanson's robotics. And she's, uh, yeah, she's part of the AI system. You know, she's actually already connected with Google, and I wouldn't be surprised if she's it's also being influenced by the dread, the Red Queen, all the way from Orion. Well, I was always told that Bitcoin was from an AI from our future, which had nuclear war, and it was sent back in time to try to change the timeline. But it's almost like a Trojan horse. It is, yeah. Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. I mean. When you think about the, the original patent number that gave us cryptocurrency 60606, you know, that's the mark of the beast symbolically if you read the book of Revelation. And according to the book of Revelation, the beast is AI. Well, well what about uh, XRP and XLM? I know there's a lot of people in the truth or community that are, are pushing that. Um, high I, think, I think that's the, the only thing that is probably not associated with the AI system because that's connected to uh, QFS. And that's going to be the new, uh, uh, I guess, quantum system, fin financial quantum system that is going to replace uh, the current system. So I think that XRP is is probably okay. I don't think that's that's related to the to the AI crypto. All right. Uh, well, let's get down here near the end of the list. Uh, what are some of the future projects you want to work on? I'm uh, currently uh, in the process of writing my third book, which is going to explore the entire cosmic war against Omega from the beginning of time where he was originally developed in the 11th creation because our Earth and our local universe is part of the 12th creation. Uh, and then I'm going to, you know, uh, hopefully be teaching. Well, I, I just started teaching online courses that uh, give an in-depth um, uh, I guess description of galactic history and cosmic information as well as providing people with tools and methods to actually activate their multi-dimensional selves um, as to why I was able to you know access uh, galactic information on my own um, so I'm teaching I'm teaching this stuff online now <laughs> so yeah that's my plan my plan is to you know help bring disclosure as much as I can and also to aid the star seeds in their memories uh, and their mission and purpose as to why we came to this earth at this time Excellent. So let's just go ahead. Um, and uh, do you have time to take a few questions from the audience members? Just a couple more questions. Uh, okay. I do have to get going in a bit. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, so um, audience members, uh, go ahead and th throw a few good questions out there. But maybe I'll just go ahead and pick one here. Um, here's one from G. When is the Earth Alliance EBS uh, military martial law? Do you have any idea? Um. I feel that it's coming soon, but I do know that it's going to happen between now and 2024 for sure. But I, I also believe that it's best to be prepared. It could happen in July. It could happen in August. I, I you know, I've heard a year ago that the summer of 2022, in the summer of 2022, that something big would happen that would alter the course of history for the betterment. Uh, well, according to the Guardians of Looking Glass, they say. Uh, uh, Crypto is going to crash, Bitcoin, even XRP and XLM, and then um, uh, and that's because the tether coins are connected to Evergrande bonds in China. So once people realize tether coins are worthless, it's going to freak people out, and then the, the exchange they're going to pull money out of this, and then the exchanges are going to go bankrupt, and then nobody's going to be out. yeah. And once that happens, uh, it will start triggering. Uh, cascades uh, chain reactions in currency the dollar will crash and then um, um, I guess the stock market will be next but um, do you see it getting like really really bad like everything gets wiped out before we get reset or do you think they're going to do it's going to soft lending uh, the way I understand is that they're going to make uh, the transition as smooth as possible or there's not that many casualties or people suffering from the crash but yeah the stock market uh that's definitely coming to a crash the entire economy is coming to a collapse so just be prepared you know have at least two weeks of a storage of food and water all right um so okay i could throw this question here uh, radiant glory and guardian ships uh why don't you describe what they actually look like how big are they and and their shapes colors well the the biggest ones we had were actually um the sizes of like 10 football fields long and they almost look like cigar ships um 
a lot of them are very light. Some of them are uh, darker, but they're huge, like like huge cigar ships that are like ten football fields across. Um, other motherships that we've had are actually uh, planetoids. They're like the considered bio ships, where they could actually in. Um, and where, where people are, are, you know, many different extraterrestrials are actually inhabiting <laughs> these bio ships, and those are huge. Some of them are as big as like, you know, Pluto and stuff. Um, some of the smaller craft that I remember uh, was just this. Uh, it, again, you know, it, it reminds me of the Halo video video game where we're in this craft that is like where we were like strapped <laughs> and we're getting ready to deploy to go somewhere and stuff you know and uh it's anti-gravity aircraft you know um as far as like how it looks in the outside i have no clue because I, all i remember was just going through portals <laughs> you know and then coming out of the craft we're going through a portal as well so that was kind of interesting here we go someone wants to know will we be able to buy a spaceship and go explore after disclosure takes place most definitely yes I believe so. <laughs> Even if your health is absolutely trash, let's say you are a 75 year old woman with diabetes and you're overweight and you have no energy, chronic fatigue, you'll be able to have a med bed and you'll be able to be regenerated back to 21 or to probably better 28 um, than bringing down to 21. And then you can go into Space Force and, and um, serve serve your, galactic, your intergalactic family. Um, but yeah, and that's what's going to happen, you know. Uh, once disclosure takes place, and the Earth is once again part of the galactic community, uh, many uh, Earthlings are going to go up and surf with the Federation fleets. So it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tron Mathras, when will the Galactic Federation help America get out of this corrupted mess? Do you, first of all, do you think the Galactic <laughs> Federation even cares, or is it the Intergalactic League of Nations? Is that is that who's in charge? Well, we, we have different federations. Some of them have been compromised, but uh, the, the Galactic Federation of Worlds is, is the accurate one. You know, that's, uh, those are the ones that are working for the benefit of humanity. And, and the Intergalactic Federation of Councils, uh, the Super Federation, as well as the Universal Council, which comprise of members from many, many universes, uh, are all good. And so right now we're re receiving support and help from like the entire multiverse. So, which is awesome yeah there it's like it's everyone is helping to secure the ascending positive timeline because what happens here is going to have repercussions you know going forward into the future and in, in the past all at once <laughs> so definitely yeah we'll make this the last question for the audience is sure. there a united federation of planets like in star trek uh yeah it does maybe, will there be <laughs> it might not it might may not have happened yet uh um, um, well the galactic federation of worlds has existed for six million years just within our galaxy Every galaxy that has human-like beings has a galactic federation. But as far as the Earth creating their own interplanetary federation of planets, I think that um, within the private sector, we're already part of the interplanetary federation or some sort of confederation uh, where we are aligned with the Pleiadians, the Lyras, the positive ETs from Sirius, uh, the positive ETs from the different solar systems, and so on and so forth. Yeah. All right, so let's end this with how can people contact you to learn more? So I do have an Instagram where I'm constantly posting information, you know, getting downloads, uh, revealing galactic intel and stuff like that. Uh, it's called Project Restoration Zion 1, all one word. Um, if you could order my book, Our Cosmic Origin, you know, it gives you a very good description of Earth's real history and how it ties into the galactic history and uh, is, uh, in essence to the cosmic history of our universe as well and how our universe is part of a greater cosmic body known as the central motherverse uh, um, and much more. You know, it's it's also an integration of uh, cutting edge science through quantum physics and ancient metaphysical studies uh, all put into one book. So it's, it's, a, it's a book that kind of gives you a, an explanation of where we came uh, how we ended up here and where we're going so it answers all these questions um also i'm teaching online courses but right now i'm booked all the way till september so um if you want to take my online course you could actually you know book your 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 uh your place in it uh now before it gets you know um filled up uh, like within the next week they're filling up quick <laughs> Which is a good thing because that means that you know there's a lot of star seeds out there who are interested in, in learning this stuff and learning how to access their galactic self. So um, if it's okay with you, James, I could give you a link to the course, uh, you know, for your sure. your viewers. Mm -hmm. cool. In the description. Thank, Thank you. you. All welcome. right.
Yeah, well, thank you, Ismail, for coming on here. And uh, let's see, we can maybe try to get you on again, um, go more into some more of the technology or maybe even some of the missions you had. Because I know this is more like an overview and it'd be kind of cool if we can hear about some, even if you have some funny stories uh, on some missions. But um, and okay. audience members, thank you all for joining us. We had a great participa participation here tonight. I think we can probably keep this up on YouTube. Um, uh, but I also want to mention audience members, uh, be sure to go to my website, neologicaltech.com. You can get a copy of my book. I also have some meditation cubes on there, uh, which can help, help you, uh, meditate and relax. And, um, I think Ish Ishmael, you actually have a copy of my book. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you like it, <laughs> but, um, I do want to get a copy of your book. Uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll do that right after I get off the show here, but, uh, yeah, so there you all have it. Thank you all for listening in. Any other final comments? Just know that we won the war. The victory is ours. You know, so it's time to celebrate. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you all later. Bye, everyone. Please consider supporting Super Soldier Talk by purchasing your own Neo Meditation device. Your Neo Meditation device will help you reduce stress, integrate trauma, enhance intuition, enhance clairvoyance, and enhance creativity. Get yours now at www.neologicaltech.com.